All right, so welcome to this stream. Today, I will be installing the Flow uh, compiler and runtime on a brand new computer. So let's just get started. Let me share my screen here. And the first thing I do is that I go to GitHub and then I search for Flow9 on GitHub. There you go, here it is. So here's the code for Flow and here's the readme. And down here it says how to install it. So I need to have Git, uh, the, the long file support installed. I have that already, but let's go ahead and start uh, checking it out. So I have my command prompt here. I just check it out in root. You can check it out where you want to. All right, so here it goes. Um, it'll take a few minutes. Uh, and while it's doing that, I can prepare for the next step. It says I should add a flow bin to my path. So I'll just open um, system properties in Windows and here environment variables. You can go and edit the path and here add a new entry for C flow nine bin. All right, I'll add that. So I can do that while it's doing the other thing. Okay, what else? It needs to in install Python 3 to make sure that's in my path. Okay, I'll do that Python 3. Let's get that download Python, download for the windows, that's fine. Install now, customize installation. Let's just do that a little bit. I don't think we need this. We don't need it, this one. I think that's fine. Install for users, I wanna do that, why not? Uh, add Python to environment variables. We don't need the other stuff. All right, so we're installing Python in the meantime. Okay. Uh, what else? It wants me to do open JDK 9, 11 or later. All right, so let's find the latest open JDK and get that one download and install. That's fine. Uh, it can be found here, ready for use, this one, Windows, a zip file here, fine, let's get that, okay. Uh, in the meantime, this one is done. Okay, so we checked out flow, we have that now here on that. And uh, the Python done is also done, okay, great. Uh, disable path length limit. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Let's do that. Okay, close. And we have JDK here. So it has to be the 64 bit version and I just double check that it is. So I'll just extract this one, extract all. Uh, and then we have it in here when it's done. There you go. Okay, so I'll just place this uh, on my computer somewhere logical, not in the downloads folder. I'll just make a folder called, I don't know, work. Let's put it here. And now I have the JDK. And what I need to do is to add this, this, uh, uh, let's see, how is it you install Java? I think you have to put an environment variable called Java path or something like that. Uh, I think we can just add the Java to the environment variables. As, as, let's try that at first. So let's try that and see if that works. Anyways, we'll find out shortly, if not. So we did the path again, and this time I'm gonna add the JDK to my path. All right, so Python is there. Uh, JDK is there. So now it wants me to go here and run this guy. Okay, let's try it. So uh, I have, it's because this is a command prompt has not the latest path. I have to close this window and open it again. That's how it works. So when I do that, I get this one now and I can try again, demos, demos. 
And there you go. Now it's uh, compiling this particular program. Um, and if everything is working, we should be seeing the program once the compile finishes. The first compile will take a little bit of time. There it is, and there you go. So now we compile the first flow uh, code and run it on my local computer. All right. So, so far, so good. Uh, now, um, to, to compile flow to other uh, targets, we can also uh, compile to Java, for instance. So if I use it like this, then it will use the Java compiler to compile the result to uh, a Java file with Java. So let's just test that as well. It's gonna take a while because it's gonna compile the Java code in the background, which uh, takes uh, a little bit of time. Um, in addition to this, we can also compile to JavaScript. And to do that, I'll just open a new tab. This one can run in the background in the meantime. And, uh, you know, uh, you, use, you use the JS uh, command to do that, the JS target to do that. And now you see we have a problem. We don't have hacks. So to get a compilation to, to um, hacks it to work, we have to do more stuff. And for that reason, we can go to the docs folder and we can look at the Windows markup. So in here, there is more instructions for additional things to install if you want to do more than the, just the basics. So we can go to this website and install hacks as well. So we'll just get the 64-bit uh, installer here. Uh, and it tries to protect me from this one because it doesn't know it, but I can run it anyways. I do trust Hexen. I know these guys are fine. And here is the setup. I need to both install Hex and Neko. Neko is uh, kind of like a virtual machine for Hexen. That's fine. We'll install it here. Okie dokie. And now we're done with that one. So, and then we have to install these th different things here as well. That's, you do that in the command line as well. So I'll just get the path updated. Let's just exit this one. In the meantime, the Java finished, we'll check that afterwards, but let's just do the hexa thing first. So here you got to do these uh, guys. Okay. And then uh, to check that everything works, I'll need to do this and see if I can compile this thing. So it's deprecated, it's just warnings. That's fine. That's just because hexa, uh, the newer version uh, has some more warnings. But to test this now, we should be able to compile this to JavaScript now and see if that works. Indeed it does. And if we compile it to HTML, whoops, no, that's wrong. Let me just uh, compile to HTML, then we get a wrapper as well. And we can check that uh, the, the HTML works. So if I open this, there you go. We have the same program running in the browser. All right. So I think that, that covers the main things. Now we can compile to the bytecode, uh, which is what you do with the flow CPP. It compiles and runs the bytecode using uh, the so-called QT byte runner. And that's what this one does. You can uh, compile to JavaScript using the JS or HTML options, or you can compile to Java using the JAR option. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna install a development environment. Um, and for that, uh, I think uh, the, the best way to go is to get VS Code. So I've installed VS Code here. And now what I wanna do is that I wanna install the flow extensions. So to do that, I go to the extensions tab and then up here, there is install from VSIX, all right? And then I go to flow under resources and then VS Code and lo and behold, there is a flow VSX uh, option here. So now we have installed the flow uh, extension here, okay? So now let me just try to open uh, the flow folder uh, and demonstrate some of these features. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, this PC C flow like this, select folder. So now we have opened a folder with some flow stuff or oh, there's a workspace. Let's go for the workspace instead. 
that's always an advantage. All right, and let's try to open this demos program again here. And now you can see it has syntax highlighting inside uh, VS Code. And also if I press F7, it will um, compile it. And you can see it's using the server. So uh, Flow comes with a, a compiled server that VS Code automatically starts and set up. And you can always validate if the server is online down here. It says Flow HTTP server online. And then I know it's there and that makes compiles pretty quick. So now you can see it's 0.4 seconds for the same compile. And Shift F7 allows me to uh, compile and run this program with the C++ runner, okay? Now this, uh, this integration has some other nice features. So you can see if I hover, it'll give me uh, information about these functions, uh, where they're defined, uh, what are the different parameters and so on. If I wanna get, understand more about uh, these things, I can also just put the cursor there and press F12 on the keyboard. And then it opens up the, the file with the definition for it. Then I can read a bit more about these details. Um, so uh, I think that should be sufficient to get to know flow. Obviously um, it's, it's a good idea to read the documentation. So in the, in the uh, Git repository here, uh, you have a documentation about flow, the flow markdown here. We'll explain how the language works, how to, uh, what are the type systems and you know, all of the different things. And other than that, we do have a discord. There's information about that also here. So you can join that if you're interested to learn more. So flow works on windows. It also works on Linux and Macs. So uh, whatever platform you have, that should be, it's the same process basically as, as what I just did. And you can find more information in, in these particular files here for Linux and Mac. Okay, that's it for today. So good, uh, a good place to stop, I think. Bye.